Thank you for joining Pastor Curtis and Joy for this message. If you would like to hear more from Pastor Curtis or Joy, please check them out on their Coker Ministries YouTube channel. Also, please like and subscribe if these messages are a blessing to you. You can also visit their webpage at cokerministries.com. God bless you. Have a great day. This ministry functions on the support of our listeners. We appreciate your prayers and your financial blessings. Your support helps us to continue to share the message of grace, peace, Christ righteousness, and the finished work of the cross. You can give online or digitally at the Cash app. The name is Coker Ministry or Joy Coker. Also at Venmo at Joy Coker. Or you could mail your support or prayer request to Coker Ministries, 15239 555th Avenue, Parker's Prairie, Minnesota, 56361. We pray God's blessings over you. Remember, if you are in Christ, you are blessed, highly favored, and so very deeply loved. Again, thank you for joining us in the Word. Be blessed. Did you see me? I, I saw you guys. Yeah. I went. I don't think he saw me. No, he didn't. He was I too didn't. focused. Yeah. I about jumped out of the window. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now we are live on Facebook. Oh, it was well on Facebook. You're gonna hear this. It, it was so fun to see that car going down the middle of Parker's Prairie. It sounded good, Jim. Yeah. I tell you, I like it. I almost turned around and followed. Him. <laughs> Made a parade out of it. But we had to we had, a, had to go. Yeah, the places to be. That was fun to see it. All right. If you don't know this, he's got a car that's been in the garage for many, many, many years. And he had it fixed, what, Two last years. year? Year before last, something like that? I got to see year. him driving it down the middle of Parker's Prairie. <laughs> he wasn't speeding, even though he could have. <laughs> he didn't. Now, Karen... She would have been speeding. Karen would have been speeding. Yes. <laughs> Just had to throw that in there. Tell them, to them. Well, tell them what it is. Well, 442. 668 442 convertible. Ooh. They did not have the top I was say, chick. Karen probably didn't want to mess her hair up. No, that's true. <laughs> Well, you know, fact, I, Karen, Karen and Jim got married right here. Yes, they, yes did. they did. How many years ago was that? Eight. Long no time. way. No way, I know. Like this room, room brings you back memories, you know. It's like, like I said, Linda and And Linda and Arlen, Arlen were and, right here. And yeah. Jim, Jim was here. And uh, Dan came that. shortly after that. And, uh, I wasn't invited. I saw pictures. You were <laughs> <laughs> You didn't miss nothing. <laughs> you would have been. Oh, okay. <laughs> you guys yeah. get married in September? Or when did you get married? 22nd of September. September. Okay. All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity you've given us to gather together in this your place. Holy Spirit, you truly are the great teacher. And we simply ask to help us repent. Change the way we think. Do what only you could do. With the text that we know, may we begin to feel and experience the truth. Be our teacher, be our guide. Open the eyes of understanding. Bring to us the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of your role in our life. What Jesus really has done freely to fulfill the eternal plan that you the Father have established from before the foundations of the world. Because you loved us so much. May we understand why 
May the mysteries of the ages be revealed. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen, amen and Amen. I tell you what, we could we could go off in all kinds of directions. You know, most people don't really realize that uh, in the book of Revelations, even though they we, we say the verse quite often that Jesus was slain before the foundations of the world. A lot of people just know that text says that. They don't think about what that means. Now, Jesus was crucified at Calvary, but He was slain before the foundations of the world. God knew sin was coming. And He prepared to pay the price for that. Before the ground was even there to build a, create a tree, to put Jesus' Son on the cross. That's powerful. All right, we're going to continue where we left off last week. Uh, actually, we're going to go back and talk more about what we talked about last week in more detail. We did get to the point. Do you want to share those slides from Tozer making those comments? I made those slides for you. <laughs> Beginning or the end of it? <laughs> <laughs> well, before you get started in other things, because you well, were really excited you about it. I, I, Whatever you want to do there, you've got the computer. I, well, okay, there it is. You put right stuff there. up there, I don't know what's up there anyway. So I mean, I, so there, there I'm scared to... It. Do what? Truth, or text or scripture that is not experienced is no better than an error. And it may be fully as dangerous. And the scribes who sat in Moses' seat were not victims of error. They were the victims of their failure to experience the truth that they taught. Wow. Mm -hmm. wow. That almost sounds familiar like what's been taught around here. Found that in a book. Wow. Joy got a book out of Alexandria Library, uh, a bunch of spiritual books at yeah. the book fair, whatever. And I don't know if you know who Tozer is, but he wrote this book. He It was published in 1955. Five. And uh, he had that insight about the difference between text and truth. And I, I know that's hard for some people to... Uh, yeah, we're going to talk about more of that in a second, but... But it really will open up your eyes to really, you know, like I said, arguments are over text. No one argues over truth. No one argues over truth. <laughs> and uh, the, the text won't set you free, truth will. And we'll even, we'll even see today in a, in a message that uh, in Scripture where the devil used text. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The devil used text. Yes, yeah. But he didn't know the truth. But he quoted scripture. Yeah. So, so anyway, we're going to get back into that. Let's go back into the book of Matthew. We're going back to Matthew chapter 4. Matthew 4. It's where we left off last week. We talked about the we were talking about the three different temptations uh, the devil brought to Jesus, and we were getting to the point that we got to. We we got to the end of that, but I'm gonna go back and talk. We skipped over so much. We're gonna talk more about this right after Jesus gets uh, baptized by John the Baptist in the River Jordan. Uh, he hears in verse 17, chapter three, verse 17, and suddenly a voice uh, came from heaven saying now I want you to understand the word voice doesn't mean it was just in his heart this is something everybody heard now we're not going to go into what some of the rabbis teach about this came from heaven it came from heaven it was a voice from heaven that everybody heard and there are some other people that share a much broader than just the local river area heard it but we won't get into that it says, and suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. Well, last week we started it in, in uh, 2 Peter where it says, uh, uh, Peter is uh, reminding people that Jesus received glory and honor when he heard a voice from heaven that said that he was God's beloved Son. Let's turn there real quick. What chapter again? In 2 Peter. Chapter 1. As soon as I get there. <clears throat> verse uh, 17, starting at verse 16. 
For we did not follow, uh, follow cunning devised fables when we were made known to you the power of the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, but were eyewitnesses of His majesty. Now, they were witnesses of His majesty on in Matthew 17, starting at verse 1, on the, on the mountain of transfiguration, which we call the mountain of transfer. And that's where Peter, he was Peter, James, and John, were there, and they witnessed and they heard the same voice that Jesus heard at the very beginning in, in Matthew chapter 3, verse 17. They heard that Jesus was told this twice at the beginning of his ministry and when he was on the mountaintop, and they heard from heaven God say, that in, in verse 17 it says, For he received from God the Father honor and glory when such a voice came to him from the excellent glory, This is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. These are the two times Jesus heard this. And the, in this, we talked about what, the, and we talked about these words last week, honor and glory, that he received value and dignity and identity. He got his identity, his sonship, from what he heard the Father saying. So we go back into the book of Matthew. In verse 1, chapter 4, Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterwards he was hungry. Uh, now, before we get any further, I want you to understand that there's... Oh, we don't have... Oh, hallelujah, we don't have a clock in here. <laughs> <laughs> Did you bring your pillow? I have my phone. Oh, you do? Okay, thank you. <laughs> the power will automatically go off. Yeah, no, well, he'll, he'll get up and walk out. Uh, <laughs> it's 7.42. Okay. 38 minutes. So, what we need to understand is that, real quickly... In the Jewish culture, there's many ways of learning. They have a, a way called um, uh, a remez, which we've talked about before in the past. It's a time of repetition. Uh, uh, it's, a, a, it's like, uh, for God so loved the world. He gave and, his only begotten son. And that's how they teach their children. And in the process of their learning Scripture, there's two ways that they, they look at Scripture. One way, they, they put themselves in the character of Every ver every story, like Malchus. You know the story of Malchus. Everybody, he's mentioned one time in Scripture. We've talked about this before, where Jesus is in the the garden and he's about ready to be arrested uh, by the, the the soldiers or the the temple soldiers. And Peter's there, and Peter takes his knife and he cuts Malchus's ear off. Okay. Well, for Malchus, to, to make this real quick, Malchus was learning how to be a priest and learning how to be a high priest and to be a priest and a high priest you can't have any facial deformities and so when Peter cut his ear off see Peter was standing here and they were coming to take G Peter's future Jesus okay they were Jesus is ever Peter's whole life was based on Jesus and they were coming to take his life away take Peter's life his future away his his he had given everything for it. And then, but, and so Peter, when he cut off his ear, he took everything away from Malchus. Malchus couldn't be a priest anymore. And so in this scenario, a Jew will see himself or, in, in, like Malchus. Has someone done something to us to take our future away? Are we a victim of what someone else has done to us in life? You know, you know are we like Peter? Have we done something to somebody else? To take their future away, to destroy their destiny, to, to take away their future, their their everything that they dreamed about. Have we are are we the victim, or, or maybe are we the the one that has perpetrated ourselves on somebody and caused great harm, or something like that? Are we Jesus, where Jesus reached down, picks up the ear, and puts it back on Malchus and restores him back into his future? So a, a Jew will put themselves in all these different characters to see where they fit and how the word apply. And because of that, they have four major ways that they study Scripture and its depths of Scripture. There's the surface, and that's what we're going to talk about tonight. When we look at these, we're going to talk about the, 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 the different levels of revelation, if you want to call it that, or different, and that's where truth comes out in this, because 
The simple text will say something, but there's more than just the simple text. And we're, this is, this is, I mean, I'll tell you what, this, this passage of scripture in here is full of that. So let's start with that. And it says now in verse chapter, uh, chapter 3, uh, excuse me, chapter 4, verse 3, Now when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God. Now see, everybody believes the first temptation of Jesus Christ. When I asked them, that has turned a rock into bread. No, that's not the first temptation. The temptation that Jesus was confronted with was, If you be the Son of God. What had he just heard from the voice in his ears? What had he just heard from heaven, from his Father? This is my beloved Son. So what did he receive? He received value and dignity and identity right then and there. He got his dignity, his value, his, his, his worthiness from his identity with his Father. That's why it's so important for young men to have a good father's image and get the 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 uh, there, there's nothing more important to a to a young man when he's eight and nine and ten years old and even long, even later in life to hear the to hear a man especially their father say good job you you, you did it like a man you know for a young boy to hear that man. That affirmation of uh, of a child is huge, from the father to the son. Gotta have it. We, we'll keep all the personal stories out of that. But when the tempter came to him, he said, "If if you are the son of God, command these stones say stones, stones. stones. and the bread." Now, what was written engraved on stones? The law. the law was. And see, what well, and see that's a deeper level, I need to get to the first level first. The first level just says this, command these stones to become bread, but he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by, what? Bread, bread alone, bread. but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So on the first level, what do we see here? What Jesus is saying is that man's not going to live, see man's going to have to have bread. Man's going to live. The human body's got to have intake through the mouth. But man's not going to live just by what goes into his mouth. Man's going to live by what goes into his heart. Do you see that? that the, see, man shall not live by what goes into his mouth alone. But by every word that he hears from his father. See, the hearing is what's important. It's not what's being told, it's but by hearing. And, it, and we know what it says in, in John chapter 10. Faith comes by what? Hearing. 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 Matter of fact, Joy put John chapter 10, verse 17, I do believe. Are you sure it's not Romans? Oh, Romans, excuse me. Yeah. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. It's up there. I know, but I can't turn around. <clears throat> So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the what? Word God. Not the text. The word, the spoken word, the rhema word. There's two ways to understanding scripture. There's a rhema word and there's a one called logos. Logos is what's written. Rhema is what's spoken. That you, rhema is what you hear in your heart. You can go to church all your life and all you if all you do is hear Scripture and never hear the truth about Scripture in your heart. One's just in your head. But the truth needs to be heard in your heart. It says here, now, let me just show you this. Uh, a bit, this is a bad translation, by the way, and you can look this up on your own. Uh, verse 16. As a matter of fact, it goes back up. Very uh, Verse 9 talks about that if, a, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you shall be what? So you shall be saved. saved. For with the heart, say heart. 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 Not head. But with heart one believes unto righteousness. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And then it goes on and talks about how can a person hear if someone's not sent to speak? 
And what are they supposed to speak? Look down at uh, verse 15. And how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the what? Gospel. The gospel of peace. It's the good news of peace. Verse 16. But they have not all obeyed. Wrong translation. Look it up. Hupakuo. It's a Greek word. The end result is actually it's the word there's a story in scripture where there's a bunch of people praying and they hear a knock on the door and a little girl hears the knock on the door and she responds to the knock. Same word, hupakuo. See, you can't obey without first hearing. Right. The basic understanding of the word hupako is to hear. Which fits within context. How will they believe unless one what? Hears. So this really should be, and I, you know where I learned this from? My good friend John Holler. And you don't know who John Holler is? Maybe you've heard me mention him. He was the, uh, the, the, the director of Christ for the Nations who's got the, he, one of my Greek friends. Okay. He's enjoying heaven now. He's enjoying heaven now. This is, but they have not all heard the gospel. See, that fits within the context. You can't obey unless you what? It doesn't say they've been told it. They've got to hear the gospel. It's just not about shouting it out. It's about letting the Holy Spirit communicate something in your heart so you can obey. Man, I tell you what. And how does faith come? By hearing. By hearing. By hearing. Not being told, but by hearing. It, it's... Uh, I, I, I tell you, it, I'm going to get off a of track. I wish I had a... Joy, we need to bring that clock in here. This goes all the way back to the Garden of Eden. Adam and Eve were created in the image and the likeness. likeness. The devil made Eve think that she wasn't like God, that she could do something. In the, just eat of this and you'll be like God. She already was like God. See, that's what religion will cause you to do. Just do this and you'll be a better Christian. God will love you more if you just do. If you don't do this, God's not going to love you. Yes, He will. He already has. God has no. Uh, 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 the word agape is God's love. It's only one way. It, it's it's just one way. It's one. It's a hundred percent all the time. Not because you deserve it. But it's to satisfy his desire to love someone. He has a desire to love. That's why we're created. He doesn't love angels. He loves you. Man, got to get off of that. So there's different levels in this. Well, like like we just mentioned, what what are stone? What was written engraved on stones? Ten Commandments. The, the law. So was Jesus saying in this that man's not going to? Was the devil trying to get Jesus to turn this the the rock, the stone, into substance. And Jesus said, no, I'm not going to make the law of substance along with bread. Doesn't the, doesn't the Scripture even say that His body is the bread of life? Sure. So there's many different levels of revelation contained in Scripture which we can glean and learn from all of them. But the one I want to share tonight mainly is the fact that Jesus was saying, Man's not going to live by what comes into your mouth alone. It's going to come by what comes into your heart. And that's what Jesus heard when He heard the Father call Him Beloved Son. Man, I tell you what, we need to get our identity from what God says about us. Remember, the truest thing about you is what the Word says about you. It's not what you think about you. The problem is we need to change the way we think about ourselves to line up with what God says about ourselves according to the New Covenant. Alright, so let's go on. Then the devil took him up. I, I love this. There's so much stuff in this. Uh, see, we read this and we go right past this. And the devil what? Where are they at? Where are they at when Jesus... and out in the desert. They're out in the desert. Then all of a sudden, the devil takes him up. 
Are we talking about transported him? One minute they're here, and in the next moment, they're here. Oh, see, there's some stuff in the Bible we just skip over because we just don't take time to meditate. And he said to him, let me just go back to verse 5, Then the devil took him up. We're not going to talk more about that. I just did that to whet your appetite. I know you, I know you like that kind of stuff. Because that's, kind of, that's that's like beat me up Scotty stuff. You know what I'm saying? That's what that's I know, because they were instantly in the hole. I know, but there's the... Okay. Then the in devil the <laughs> took him up into the holy city. Took him to Jerusalem. One minute they're in the desert, next minute they're in Jerusalem. Mm-hmm. Not just in Jerusalem, but they're in the temple. They're on what is called the pinnacle, or a pinnacle. You know what a pinnacle is? Mm-hmm. It's not necessarily just... The, it's up. But where's the busiest place in Jerusalem? The where the The temple. Yeah. And uh, within a split... No. I'll let you think about that. I love thinking about those. In a split moment of time, they're at the temple on a pinnacle. A pinnacle is an outcropping of a main building uh, that actually has a, a higher, a, 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 a higher place to stand. So, in other words, everybody's seeing this. So, were they seeing this? I don't think they were seeing this. I think they were in the the spirit Fear realm. Down. Yeah. But that's where they were at. Watch this. And the devil took him up into the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple. temple. Now, in today's language, that would be called the church. Sure. And some people thought that would be Tulsa. Because Tulsa was the spiritual center of the Bible Belt. So the largest church in Tulsa, just kidding. And said to him, If you are the Son of God, there's that there's that temptation again. It's not to get him see it's a performance based relationship that Satan wanted Jesus to walk into. But Jesus never performed to prove who he was. Who he was proved what he did. Because he is the Son of God, he manifested as the Son of God, but he didn't do what he did to become the Son of God. And that's where in church that we have performance-based religion, performance-based Christianity. A lot of religion will tell you to do these things to become something. And we've said this for years. Most people in the body of Christ are trying to become something they already are. They're already pleasing to God. They're already complete in Christ. They just don't understand it because they're looking at their flesh. They're not looking in the spirit realm the way God sees them. Remember, the true reality for you is how God sees you, not how you see you. And what is reality anyway? Reality is just a matter of perspective. Do you realize that? That there's no one set reality? It's a matter of perspective. I could ask you, what does this room look like if you don't turn your head around? Just what would, does this room look like? You would say it has a TV in the middle, a Christmas tree here on the side. Well, guess what? That's your reality. That's your view. What's mine? I don't see a pretty tree. You see all these pretty girls. I I see all these pretty people out here, (laughs) smiling faces. No, 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 that's not what I'm saying. See, my reality is different. You know, you take a person at the top of a hill with a car, and uh, he loses control of his car, and it starts going down the hill. And there's a guy down at the bottom of the hill, right? Well, this guy, he's losing his car. That's his reality. He's seeing his, the car go bye-bye. The guy at the bottom of the hill, he's got a different reality facing him. That's my car. <laughs> he's he's going to get a car. He's going to get a car <laughs> over the top of him. He's got to, he's got to make some decisions to, to save his life. Where the guy, he doesn't have to make those decisions. See, the same situation... And that's why they make judges. Because you ever see anybody stand up and swear in court to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the oh, wrong hand. The truth. So help them God. And they tell the uh, they from their reality, from their perspective, they tell the judge what they know. 
and someone else would come up sit in the same chair. Just the opposite. Why? Different perspective. And the judge's job is to take the two perspectives and bring them together and say, okay, what is the truth of what took place? Okay, so that, that, that's uh, we won't do. Okay, let's go on real quick. And in verse six, and said to him, "If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is what." Good. What's it say what? here? For it is what? what? It's written. written. It's text. Mm -hmm. Well, the text says. I know so many people. Well, the scripture says. Yeah, the devil did that too. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I, I watch some people on YouTube and they just they lambask other people's ministries because of a text that they understand differently than someone else does. Sure. You do that all the time. Yeah. Guess what? The devil did the same thing. I'm not going to say that out loud, am I? Yeah, I do. <laughs> and he said, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge. That's, that's Psalms 91. <clears throat> and that's what the text says. Yeah. But in these three temptations, you'll see the pride of life. You'll see ego. You'll see the three things that we're tempted in. The three basic things that we're all tempted. And Jesus was tempted in the max in all three of these areas. So when the scripture says that when Jesus was tempted in all things as we are, they're right here in these three things. Jesus didn't have a computer. He's not tempted. To, no, but he was tempted in the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Right here. Those all three of those temptations sum up all temptations. If you can find one outside of that, let me know. But I don't think you can. Those are the three big, and all those temptations are right here. And what we're going to find out at the end here, what, what time is it going? Eight. Anyone? Let's go on real quick. We'll find it in the book of Luke, because we're going to go over to the book of Luke before we're done, and really get into what we're talking about. And he said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He shall give His angels charge over you, and in their hands... They shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. <laughs> Jesus said to him, It is what? It is written. It is written. There's the text. See, you have a confrontation of text here. The One's devil. throwing this text, Jesus throwing this text. The devil is twisting it. Ah, it's the same text, Jerry. Okay. Didn't change a word. Didn't he's, twist it. He's giving it to him in a different way. Read Psalms 91. Just to, hey, that's what it says in Psalm yeah. 91 12. Yeah. Jesus said to him, It is written again, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. See, you can make the you can make the text say anything you want it to say if you don't have truth. Jesus said to him, It is written again, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. <clears throat> again, the devil, here's that phrase. And again, the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain. Now, wait a minute. They were in the desert. Yep. All of a sudden, they're at, at, in Jerusalem on the temple. I mean, how many times do you go to a church and they, they use a text to make you feel guilty? They use a text to make you think you haven't done enough. They use a text to make you think, well, you know, they need someone to paint the building, so they're putting guilt on me to make me go paint the building. I'd be a better Christian if I paint the church building. How many times do they use Scripture to get you to perform mm, to make you feel more accepted. Mm. I love this. Better give the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the what? World. world. Now you didn't meditate on this. How did the devil show Jesus on a high mountain all the kingdoms of the world. Yeah. I don't know how. Man, you're going to have to meditate on that, Jerry. Oh, you, you know it. Let's yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> and he said to them, let's go to verse 8 again, and again the devil took him up 
an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said, all these things I have, I will give. What? The devil said to Jesus, all these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship worship me. Man. Then Jesus said to him, away with you, Satan, for it is written. You shall worship the Lord your God, and Him only you shall what? Serve. Is that what the Bible says? Yeah. No, it's not. What does it say? Well, then what does it say? Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 13. <laughs> Let's just go there and look to see what the text says. <clears throat> Someone read that for me. You shall fear the Lord. Whoa, 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 whoa. Did Jesus misquote scripture? The text, everybody says text. Text. The text says you shall fear. Oh, thank you, Dan. He went and got the clock. That's where he was. <coughs> the text in Deuteronomy that Jesus is quoting from. Six you six. shall fear. Yeah. And Jesus says, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship. The Lord your God. Wow. I'm going to let you meditate on that. Did Jesus not know text? No, he knew text. He knew more than that. Or did he understand the definition? Or did he understand the the truth? He understood the truth. What was that Deuteronomy? What? 613. See, you can know the text, but if you don't know the truth... So I've heard people say, say, you read, they say, try to put people into fear. You've got to fear the Lord. Well, what's it say? It says worship. Jesus, Jesus translated the word fear into worship. worship. Well, you shall worship the Lord your God in Him only. I love what it says here. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. Before we get done, we're going to go to Luke chapter 4. We're going to pick the same story up, same passage of scriptures, or same story, different. Sure. Luke chapter 4. In a little bit of different order, but it's not that, it's not an issue. Verse 5. Then the devil, taking him up to a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the World. world in a moment. Of time. Wow. You've got to think about this stuff. Spiritual. The devil showed him. And the devil said to him, All this authority I will give you and their glory. For this has been Delivered to me. Wow. Kind of scary. Why did Jesus call the devil, Satan, the god of this world? Because he was. The devil, ever since Adam fell into sin. The first Adam gave up his authority. All authority was given to Adam in the garden to rule and reign over the entire earth and every animal in it. He was king of the world. And he surrendered when he listened to the voice of somebody else. That almost sounds like familiar, doesn't it? We're children of the king, but we surrender our authority and our identity and our value and our dignity when we listen to the voice of someone else. 
Mm -hmm. <coughs> wow. Yep. Jesus came and took back that authority. I, I, I love this. And it, it's, it's kind of a tricky way to do this. I understand that. But it, does anybody know what the Great Commission says? Does everybody know the first word of the Great Commission? Go. go. That's what everybody says it says. But go read it. It says, all authority has been given unto me. Go ye. <laughs> he didn't say go without the authority. He said, all authority has been given. Go ye. With what? The authority that he took back. Come on, church. We don't realize who we are. We don't realize what the truth has, what the, what the, what truth is hidden in the text. It's not about just going out. He didn't just send us out there as little sheepies. No. He sent us out there as ambassadors yes. of the kingdom of heaven on this earth. Man, he gets me excited. Ambassadors with all the authority. I tell you, the, I, there's a statement I read in a book, one of the few books that I have read years ago. It just set me free. I'm totally loved, fully pleasing, and complete in Christ Jesus with all the power of the resurrection available to me right now. I don't have to earn it. I can't earn it. I don't deserve it. can't earn it. It was freely given to me because of the way God sees me as one of his. Jesus. Man. Matter of fact, I still use sometimes. I, I I don't use it all the time, but I use close up. You may know what close up toothpaste is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Remember the old that was mentioned in the book way back when, how people you know think that you can use the right toothpaste and pe people will accept you. <laughs> <laughs> close up was the commercial went with the toothpaste close up. You have to be old to remember that commercial. Mm -hmm. And uh, every time I use, I buy close up just. On purpose, just to remember the book. It's like simple things for me. And the devil said to him, All this authority I will give you in their glory. For this has been delivered to me, and I give it to whomever I wish. Why? Because Jesus said he was the God of this world. I, I understand sovereignty, but most people... I shouldn't have said it that way. I'm sorry. Most people's understanding of the <coughs> sovereignty of God, they believe that everything happens on the earth is the way God wants it to happen. Mm -hmm. Give me some kind of theological break. I <laughs> wouldn't be in this situation. <laughs> Psalm 115, verse 16. That's, that's not... Mm -hmm. Go ahead and put that up there. This world is not the way God... Now, God is sovereign. And in His sovereignty, He gave control of this earth over to Adam. Yeah. And he can't take it back. So he had to send a second Adam, the last Adam, to take back that authority and give it back into us. Mm -hmm. Man. But now most of us aren't even using that authority that we've been given. We're still listening to voices outside of his mm -hmm. about who we are yeah. and what we're worth. Mm -hmm. Your worthiness... That's what, do you realize that's what the word worthy comes from? The, 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 to, made, made up two words. Worth. It starts with worth. Worthy is founded on worth. You're, you're worthy. In other words, you're worth it. I, I remember back in the back, <clears throat> Holland Heights Baptist Church. That's where I was raised. And I remember the pastor telling me that I'm just no good. Now, in the flesh, I'm no good. Jesus didn't die on the cross for junk. That's right. Amen. He saw me different than the world sees me. Right. He was, we, we were worth it to him. That's right. We were. To die on the cross. Mm -hmm. We were worth it to God to send his only begotten son so he could have a bunch more just like him. God, saw, God sees the end before the beginning. That's faith. God, that, if we could see ourselves... From the end, as we're walking today, we'd walk different. If we could see ourselves in the millennial reign, being married to Christ, living as his, his bride and full, full of glory to glorify, we'd walk different. We'd act different. We'd make a difference. 
You're worthy. Again, it has has to do with with hearing or being told. Are we hearing? The, did you put that verse up? Yeah. Uh, put Psalm. Put put that back on there. Psalms. One fifteen. One fifteen sixteen. No, the one over. Was <clears throat> that was the one that I had up before. The heaven, the heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth was given to the children yeah, of men. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, it was given to man. And I love the word heavens. Mm -hmm. I love the word heavens. In the beginning, God created the what? Heavens, heavens. heavens and the earth. Wow. Is it plural? Heavens? Yes. Yeah, it's plural. Don't don't think the stars in the sky, people. They didn't get created till later. I really believe when it's talking about heavens, like in this case, it's talking about different dimensions. Hmm. It's not like how far out is heaven? Is it past the star? It's not a distance thing. It's a dimensional thing. When God kicked man out of the Garden of Eden, he put, kicked him out. Never mind. We won't go there. Can't handle it. Mm -hmm. Let's go on. Vicky's over there eating it up. Let's go on. By the way, who is the children of men? Uh, uh, who's your daddy? All of us. Who's your daddy? Who's your mama? <laughs> Are you a child of a man? You fit. Okay. Well, I didn't know if that was slang for the devil. No, no, it's just a child of a man. Us. Never thought of it before. But here, but here again, the sovereignty of God. You know, His will will be done. I mean, we know what the calendar of events take place. The scripture shows us. The scripture shows us His prophetic word. Those things are a sovereignty. When when God tells His Son to go get His bride, that's a sovereignty of God. Mm -hmm. But the little the abortion is not God's will. Give me some kind of break. That's not the sovereignty of God. No, no, back to the comment you you didn't necessarily I mean, finish. We blame God for all the stuff that happens on the planet. However, <laughs> like the insurance, it says, or any other act of God. These aren't. It's a weather pattern. <laughs> it's not an act of God. It's not the sovereignty of God that did that. My goodness gracious people. But some people are told that, so they believe that. You didn't know weathermen were so religious. I, know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I knew they were wrong. <laughs> One and the same, I guess, religion and wrongness. Okay. I love this. Verse 7, Therefore... If you will worship before me, all will be yours. And Jesus answered and said, "Behind, Get behind me, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. Now listen to this. Then he brought him into Jerusalem, set on a high pinnacle. Talked about that. Jump down here to verse 13, verse 12. And Jesus answered and said to him, It has been said, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Verse 13. Now, now, when the devil had ended every temptation, temptation. Has, has Jesus been tempted in everything? Right yes. now, he has. He had been tempted in everything. These three things are the basis. The, each one of these is the foundation of all temptations. It's the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, and the lust of the eyes. That's First John 2.16. Well, thank you. Welcome. Put that on the board. I didn't have that on my notes, but you're my notes. That's good. Thank you, Vicky. Welcome. Pride of life, the lust of the eye, and what else? There it is. Pride there it is. Right there. Okay. Lust of the eyes and the pride of life. Now, when the lust devil the had ended every temptation, how many temptations? Every. every. Has Jesus been tempted in everything? Yes. Yeah. What? 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 what, what? When are you? When is the lust of the flesh the greatest? When you're hungry, man. If I go, if I go past lunch and don't eat, I'm I'm lusting. I'm lusting something. You gotta <laughs> pronounce it southern. Hungry. <laughs> it's a little more than hungry. It's bigger. Famous. <laughs> now let me finish reading this. So you need to understand. When are you going to be tempted? When you're at your weakest. When, when, when your flesh gets weaker. 
When you or we should say when your flesh gets stronger. When it starts hollering more. Now when the devil had ended every temptation, listen to this. He departed from him until a more opportune time. Yep. So he wasn't done. Like you. So Jesus is in a weak state in all these temptations and couldn't get him to fall. Like last week. When was that more opportune time? When was the next time Jesus was confronted with his identity? The garden. Mm -hmm. Garden of Eden. Up, up, down, That's not Jesus. That's, that's Adam. No, he's hanging on the cross. Yeah. Look at Matthew 27. Yep. Matthew 27, 39. If you are the Son of God. The Roman centurion looks up at mm. him and says, If you be the Son of God. Get yourself down. That was the more opportune time. Well. Is when his flesh was crying out. And I'm not going to sing it. But he could have called 10,000 angels. But he did not bring us into a performance based relationship. Is that in, a, I know it's a song, was that an actual Old Testament prophecy or something? Or is it in no. scripture? No, but we know he could have called 10,000 okay. angels. Okay. But he died alone. Man. Or me and you. <clears throat> if you be a Christian. Are we getting our value and our dignity and our identity from what we hear or from texts people are telling us? You can hear. I mean, you, you can be told the same scripture. I wonder if Jesus gave that centurion a look that pierced his soul. Oh. <laughs> I'm sure they were all pierced after the third day when he rose from the grave. You know, <laughs> And actually, there, there's a... We, we shouldn't put this talk like this on the what's been recorded, but... We'll share some stuff after we shut this off about that event. And uh, I'll say this to make them wish that they were here. <laughs> <laughs> we actually have documents of, of uh, the report that was taken back to Caesar. And uh, it's a Roman document of his opinion of what took place at Calvary. Hmm. Yeah, it's interesting. So question whose voice are you hearing what levels of, of revelation are, are in scripture are we just seeing the surface are we going deeper and deeper you know some people say well that's not what it says well no on the surface it says this but what's it saying in truth what are the four levels remember the Jews do this they go four they have four there's they have four Different levels, they actually have names for them. I've got them written down somewhere. They have four different levels of, of learning, uh, of depths of Scripture. And, um, well, the Bible doesn't say that. What does it? What is it saying to you? Yeah. We, we need to understand the, the children's version. And then the version... And then the version. And then the version. That's why the, I, I tell people all the time, I don't qualify to be a pastor anymore. I knew it. Yeah. <laughs> did you ever? <laughs> yeah. Back in, in, the world, in the world's mind, I did. We've <laughs> talked about that. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, the, the, the more I've learned, the more I've learned, there's more to learn. Hmm. I mean, some people believe they've come to the conclusion of what they know is it. Those are the dogmatic, blinded. It, it's, it's within it's, their it's, box. Well, it's, it's it's I've always used it as a funnel. Most funnels are used this way: big end up, small end down. Most people go into ministry and they they're gathering all this information, coming to one conclusion, and they tell everybody that. The longer I've been in his ministry, it's more like upside down the, the, I start out knowing a little bit and the more I learn yeah. the more I need to know that there's yeah. to know it gets bro it gets wider the more I know I don't know thank you mm -hmm. the more I 
No, the more it shows me I don't know. The more I realize I yeah, There's so much I more know. I need to know. Sure. Same with music. Yeah. It's like unbelievable. Kathy Elmer asked if you would please share. Do what? Kathy Elmer asked if you would please share what you're going to share after we turn it off. <laughs> <laughs> well, ask, ask, ask Kathy Elmer, what the heck was that horse head? <laughs> was that a 30 out 6 that took that baby down or what? <laughs> oh, she probably heard that. She won't like that. <laughs> Kathy Elmer. It was it was a trophy. A trophy for what? Because her we got a picture of Kathy. Does everybody remember Kathy Elmer? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Got a picture of Kathy Elmer. She sent us. She, and she's just a little bitty old, not old, but she's a little lady. And she's, she's, she does horses, whatever that means. She shows them. She trains them. Mm -hmm. And, and she's, they're spectacular. So she's won the her. Super Bowl of horse showing. She said, ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, but I'm serious. What, she's won the Super Bowl of horse showing for a couple times, which is yeah. most people don't, don't do it once. Mm -hmm. And she's standing there holding this <laughs> horse head. <laughs> it's huge. It's like. <laughs> I said, I wonder if she's going to mount that baby and said, mm -hmm. you know, is it solid gold? <laughs> That'd be good. It's bronze. It's bronze. It's bronze. <laughs> Beautiful horse head, but she's like. It's a bronze to trophy, two and a half feet. Wow. It's what? Two, two and, and a half, half feet. feet. Two and a half bronze trophy. Yeah. That's big. That she won for. Ask her what she won it for. That's a big trophy. Oh, it is. It's huge. Hi, Kathy. Everybody say hi, Kathy. Hi, hi Kathy. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Class of 79. <laughs> so, no, I won't tell it. <laughs> you got to be here, Kathy. Yeah. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to get yes. us together together in this year place. Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. you're the great teacher. We simply ask that you continue be our teacher on a journey. May we understand we never come to the end. May we never know it all. May we always have a spirit of learning. May we always be willing to hear and adjust and be tweaked. Tweak us, Holy Ghost. <laughs> Your word brings correction. Yes, it does. It brings discipline. Yes. Mm -hmm. Your word does. Love us with your word. All God's people said. Amen. Thank you for joining Pastor Curtis and Joy for this message. If you would like to hear more from Pastor Curtis or Joy, please check them out on their Coker Ministries YouTube channel. Also, please like and subscribe if these messages are a blessing to you. You can also visit their webpage at cokerministries.com. God bless you. Have a great day. This ministry functions on the support of our listeners. We appreciate your prayers and your financial blessings. Your support helps us to continue to share the message of grace, peace, Christ righteousness, and the finished work of the cross. You can give online or digitally at the Cash app. The name is Coker Ministry or Joy Coker. Also at Venmo at Joy-Coker. Or you could mail your support or prayer request to Coker Ministries, 15239 555th Avenue, Parkers Prairie, Minnesota, 56361. We pray God's blessings over you. Christ, you are blessed, highly favored, and so very deeply loved. Again, thank you for joining us in the Word. Be blessed.